Hello, it's Greg Otten here with MaritimeGardening.com and today I'm going to give you a little garden update. Stay with me. Alright, so I guess if you're going to begin somewhere, begin at the beginning. This is the front entrance of my garden. And this is, you can't tell, but these are four foot high uh, composting stations. And uh, they're full of horse manure and seaweed. And I put some pumpkin seeds and some potatoes in some of them. And looks like I'm going to have a lot of squash. <laughs> the plan was to train them up the hill that way and that seems to have worked. There's different varieties of squash. They're all open pollinated, so none of them will stay true to type. But, uh, oh well. Um, anyway, it's working out good and there's some, there's some, uh, pumpkins forming on these. These are all these different varieties. Uh, one of them, I think the center box has jack-o'-lantern, but these are some variety I got from Ukraine. I can't, uh, online. Uh, no idea what they are. I can't pronounce the, <laughs> the word. Uh, these seem to be going out along the trellis, which is nice, and going out along the lawn. So I have these outside the garden enclosure because, generally speaking, the, the deer and rabbits and porcupines seem to leave squashes alone. So that's nice. So now we're inside the cage here. Back up a little bit. That's sort of the view from when you're entering the entrance. Uh, it's mid-August and my strawberries have begun to uh, flower again. Uh, this is a day neutral variety that gives you a, a yield in um, June, but also gives you uh, another yield later in the fall and sometimes gives you yields during the summer but this summer was so hot that if it's really really hot they shut down for the summer and that's what happened this year but in previous years they've given uh, strawberries all summer long. But anyway the flowers are coming out now and uh, these strawberries go all the way along the perimeter all the way down to there so I'd say it's almost a I don't know 90 feet of strawberries 80 feet of strawberries something like that. Uh, all along here I got uh, beans going up this uh, fence. Since it's a fence anyway, it makes a good trellis. These are, um, I think they're Kentucky Wonder Beans. And they're doing pretty good. I just harvested them a couple days ago, so they're not that big right now. They're still forming. Uh, along the bottom I've got uh, just some different greens growing. There we go. And right at the edge where the border meets the wood chips, I've got different herbs. Sage, savory, tarragon, oregano, and so on and so forth. Just because I always had weeds growing down there. So one year I just said, why don't I stuff some weeds that I like in that crack? <laughs> and it's been an herb garden ever since. And it seems to work out great. Um, these are lettuce that I let go to seed. They seem to be uh, flowering nicely. So maybe in a few more weeks uh, they'll be ready to harvest as seeds. Uh, what else? The cold frames. Eggplant, this, you know, um, anyone that lives in a hot place is probably not very impressed by an uh, eggplant like this in mid-August, but this is the best eggplant I've grown since I've moved to this location. So uh, that's pretty good. These were direct seeded uh, in early May in the ground here, and uh, they're doing better than any transplants I've ever bought. <laughs> so, um, these are um, tomatoes. From this one box of tomatoes, these should have been staked. They're not looking too hot right now. They just need to be staked and cleaned up a little bit. But uh, from this two two and a half feet by six feet wide box of tomatoes, which are direct seeded in early May, I've got these ones growing. And um, we're here in another part of the garden, with the exception of a half dozen transplants that I bought. Um, this is all from that box. And these, this bed here of, of tomatoes is also from that box back there. So that's definitely an effective way to start tomatoes. I mean, they're doing pretty good for here anyway. I mean, um, tomatoes have formed, they're not red yet, but uh, it's just not a hot part of the province here and uh, certainly not one of the hotter parts of the country. So uh, at least in the summer we have, we just don't have the heat in the summer that other parts of the country have. 
But anyway, these are doing great. I'm happy with them. They're about three and a half feet high, maybe four. Uh, so they're coming along fine. And in fact, these ones which are moved from the box seem to be doing better than the ones in the box. And I think it's because I left the ones in the box still planted a little too closely. Uh, it's such a hard uh, impulse to resist planting things closely. Um, these ones are all a foot apart. That seems to be, I would say, a minimum <laughs> planting distance for a tomato. Uh, probably, uh, you know, 14 or 16 inches is even more ideal. Uh, this is uh, the bed that had all the weeds. That's now absolutely full of uh, carrots. It, it, it looked like they're dying and, and so on. It's just because I've disturbed them. I'm, I'm pulling them as, as I go. You know, whenever I want carrots, I just thin them out a little bit, and so that disturbs the greens and makes them fall over, but they're perfectly healthy and doing great. This is the, uh, I think that same video I showed, the uh, parsnip bed, and you'll notice all the ones in the middle have caught up to the ones on the ends. So that's great. A lot of parsnips. Th those are, you don't even touch those till uh, November, but for anyone that uh, doesn't think they like parsnips, uh, it's probably because you bought them at a store. If you grow them your own and you, you pick them in like, you know, around uh, Christmas time or, you know, uh, mid-December, after there's been a lot of cold and frost, uh, and you roast them in your oven, they are fantastic. Uh, oh, this is the, uh, the bed of tulips that I put these uh, patty pan squash in, and they're doing great. They're coming along just fine. So I'm happy with that, and that's a good indication for those that don't know when to plant squash you know, plant them when your tulips start to die <laughs> that seems to be because uh, these were direct seeded there was no plastic no nothing you know no cheating sort of thing I just stuck the seeds in the ground and I would say about half of them germinated um, now that just could be the variety the source I don't know but uh, we'll see how they do they're flowering now so I should have some nice little patty pan squash in a, in a few weeks um, this is a, another variety. This is a zucchini uh, seeds I saved uh, last year, Costata Romanesco. It's a beautiful ribbed, uh, really tasty um, zucchini. You don't get a lot per plant compared to certain hybrid varieties, but it doesn't matter because they they taste so good. <laughs> you don't mind getting a couple less. These are all beans. Anyone that doesn't think you can grow uh, beans. Uh, this bed here was covered in seaweed. I put about four inches of seaweed on this bed and put the um, bean seeds in around the, well, around the end of May. And uh, I've been, I got beans coming out my ears. I'm giving them away to my neighbors, freezing them, eating, I'm eat, practically eating beans every day right now <laughs> with no, uh, no sign of slowing down. Um, and the mulch was not, I didn't put it on my driveway and spray it with uh, water. I literally took it from the beach and threw it on the ground. <laughs> so that seemed to work. Uh, I'm not saying it'll work in all cases, but uh, certainly in this case it worked fine. Um, this is uh, uh, white Russian kale. I've been harvesting this all summer long and no sign of slowing down. Uh, it'll probably actually start tasting better um, when the fall comes along. I mean, I've planted some fall crops, but <laughs> I've found certain varieties of kale, they just produce all summer and into the fall anyway. You don't really need to plant kale for a fall crop. If you've got the kale growing in your garden, at least in this part of the world, where it doesn't get in so hot, um, it uh, just keeps going. Uh, you know, every, every few days I take a, a leaf or two off one of these. They're cut and come again greens. So they're just great. Uh, although I find this variety, um, I think that's a red Russian, but I think this is what they call Siberian kale. Um, I find it's better cooked. I don't really like uh, like it raw on a salad. You probably have to blanch it or do something to it. To, uh, it's it's just not a, a sweet kale, or at least I, that's to my taste anyway. Um, these are kohlrabi. I grew these for the greens. But this particular variety, which which was called like giant or something, which I thought meant it would have giant leaves. It it seems to have giant bulbs, right? Like if you look down here, you see there's a good sized bulb. But the leaves are pretty 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 wimpy by comparison. And given that it, I don't like the bulb, <laughs> I don't like the, the actual root. <laughs> um, I mean I'll put it in soup and stuff like that, I don't like to throw it away, but I really don't 
and no one in my house likes it either. <laughs> so <laughs> I grow it for the greens because I like them. They're like a collard green. Uh, so definitely this variety wasn't uh, wasn't a winner <laughs> in my household. Uh, live and let learn. Um, I think white Vienna or purple Vienna uh, kohlrabi is a better choice because my experience is they give better leaves. I just uh, the, it speaks to good marketing. I went with these because they were called giant or colossal or something like that, and I'm like, ooh, big, big's good. Um, these over here are tree collards, which I've never tried before. It's my first year. And, uh, I mean, the largest of them isn't bad, right? That's about a two-foot high collard. And you just take the lower leaves, and it just keeps getting higher and higher and higher and higher and higher. Um, so, uh, yeah, I've been eating them. I find they taste okay. I've had a bit of uh, problems with uh, uh, white fly, or cabbage worms, as they call them. But I just, um, this is really the only area I've had to, continue to use the um, uh, Safer's Endol, you know, maybe once a week or once every two weeks. Uh, whenever I see damage of any kind, I'll come in and, and, and hit them with, um, with uh, some of that. You can see over here, I just noticed there's a, uh, where is he? There's a snail right there, or a slug right there. These little guys do a heck of a lot of damage, these little gray guys. Anyway, I won't let you watch that, but he's gone to slug heaven. Uh, these peppers, again, direct seeded early May, uh, coming along fine. Um, I've never grown peppers successfully in this location, so hopefully this is the first time they've been a success. It's the best looking peppers I've had, so we'll see how it goes. These are um, sun chokes. Again, I never planted these before. I got the idea from uh, uh, Patrick Dolan, One Yard Revolution. He has these. They're supposed to have a root that's like a, a water chestnut when you cook it. So we'll see. They're supposed to have a nice, pretty flower, like a sunflower, and they come back every year. So <coughs> it's a one time purchase. Um, these are the potatoes that I planted in that uh, permaculture principle uh, video. They're just about done actually ready ready to harvest so uh, that'll be nice um, here's a location where I've got some uh, uh, Swiss chard I re this is a, this was all potatoes so you can see there's some potatoes over there they they're ready to harvest they see how they're turn yellow and falling over so um, I'm now, when I have a minute, I plant things here. I just planted some spinach here the other day. I still left the pack right there, a litter bug. Um, but anyway, that's some Swiss chard there, and I planted some other things here. Although I've been, a rabbit has found its way into my garden, and it's, they seem to like, instead of eating like a couple leaves off one big plant, they eat about 10, 10 seedlings instead. That's their preference, <laughs> which is just great. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, oh, this is my uh, grapes. I've had these here for a number of years. This is the first year they've actually produced, um, you know, anything. We'll see how that goes. Uh, my experience with grapes usually is that uh, 30 minutes after they're ready to pick, birds come along and they disappear in 30 seconds. Uh, we'll see how it goes this year. I should probably put a net over those soon. Should get around to that. Um, this is the. Uh, giant cucumber garden. I'm pulling about a gallon of cucumbers out of this every two or three days and pickling and salads and yeah, we're reaching our critical <laughs> saturation point where cucumbers are concerned. This is a Russian pickling cucumber I got from Mackenzie Seeds. Um, just, you know, hardware store seeds. <laughs> but uh, what a magnificent uh, uh, variety of pickle. They taste great. Uh, they've grown really well, uh, very vigorous. You know, you get a pickle like this, almost doubling in size every day. It's ridiculous, right? And it's just about ready to pick. I just, <laughs> I just don't, I haven't got time to get into that today, so I'm going to leave that guy. So he's going to be probably, you know, this long tomorrow. You know, let's say 50% increase in size per day. Uh, this is all zucchini. What's the other thing I want to show? 
So this is what I show the. Um, so those that watch me doing that um, fall crop thing, I planted some lettuce here. But I don't know if you can tell from the video, but something's been eating these, and my uh, CSI <laughs> expert analysis is that it's a bunny rabbit because I've seen rabbit poop here. So, uh, so I set up this box trap and I put some carrots um, leading into the box trap and hopefully he goes in there and I can relocate him. Because um, uh, I know I've seen lots of permaculture people talk about just sharing with nature and getting along with nature and so on, but when they when nature comes in and it just takes out all your seedlings, <laughs> you can't get along. It's just not going to work. You know, and why wouldn't you go over this uh, big pile of beans and just eat a couple branches? That'd be fine. Um, but no, he likes these uh, baby lettuce. And so he'll come out here in, 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 in the morning and eat 20 baby lettuce, <laughs> which is not working for me. Um, but the funny thing is, uh, for people ever trying to trap rabbits, uh, they like lettuce more than... Uh, carrots <laughs> because I came out this morning and he was sitting right here eating my lettuce you know he took off into the into the woods um, I got a fence all the way around my garden but um, he's really young he's like a uh, juvenile rabbit so he can slip through uh, the mesh is about two inches by four inches and he can get through that um, from you can see the green there from there all the way around I put a secondary mesh that's finer but I stopped right there because I'm an idiot. <laughs> I got busy doing other stuff in the spring and just left it and now it's all and the tick season started and grasses got higher and I just didn't want to be back there with all the ticks so I left it and now it's I'm not going in there forget it you know um, I'll just trap that guy and just move him somewhere you know way down the road somewhere and let him uh, continue on with his life eat someone else's lettuce. <laughs> I guess and finally let's do the Ruth Stoke garden here so go through the little high-tech lock here. So here's the Ruth Stout Garden beds that I made and uh, they're doing great. Right, is there some weeds? Yes. Have some of the weeds come through the hay? Yes. But if you look, uh, you can't see this as well as I can, but for the most part except for the sides, right? There's, there's weeds coming up the sides, but if you look in the center there, there's very few weed plants that made it through that, which I'm amazed at, because it was, I mean, all I did was put manure over this sort of stuff, and then about a foot high of hay. But it seems like the potatoes are choking out the weeds. At least that's what it seems like. So what an easy way to make a garden. Right, these are doing just great. Um, this is a potato garden, it's kind of a weird hole here. I'm gonna guess some animal was walking around in here. <laughs> it's the only explanation. And look at this. Check this out. I don't know how that got started back here, but that's lovage. That's not a wild plant around here, not that I know of. And I had some in my main garden last year. I do not know how on earth that got out here. Unless it was in some manure that I moved in it from a compost bin or something. I have no no clue how that got here. It must be from my compost bin, the seeds. That's interesting. I think you can use these leaves for salads or something like that, or as a herb. I can't remember what, what the use is. And that's definitely lovage. That's a pleasant surprise. Anyway, something was in here because that's just irregular space here, but this garden's outside the enclosure, so it's, you know, it's, it's, it's left to Lord of the Flies. <coughs> anyway, these two beds were planted before the roost out beds, so they're falling down and they're, they're looking lousy because they're, they're ready to be harvested. Uh, this one even more so than this one here. This one doesn't seem to be quite as ready. There's a lot of heavy green still going on. We had a really, really hard rain last night, so I think it pushed a lot of stuff down. Um, this, actually, these two beds are modified hugo culture beds, so I put a box around it, but there's a whole bunch of rotten wood 
I dug out a trench and put a whole bunch of rotten wood in and then put the soil back um, with um, you know some compost um, so it's interesting to see how that works out let's just do a sort of panoramic shot here give you a look at the whole garden it's very foggy so that's just the weather here especially in the morning sometimes it's misty and windy <laughs> sorry about that uh, anyway the garden's coming along great this is my best year since 2014 um, best garden I've had since 2014 so no complaints all right so just a quick little video tour of the garden to give uh, everyone a look at what's going on here people that are interested or what have you see how the different uh, if you've been following along, watching the different videos, see how the different uh, projects have turned out, different experiments. Always experimenting in my garden, and I encourage everyone to do that. Uh, don't do something because I said to do it. Try, try, try anything. So, uh, hope that was useful for you. Um, if you enjoyed this content, check out our other.